Hello and welcome to Efficient Strategy Gaming. Today, we're gonna to be doing a in-depth production guide for Hearts of Iron 4. This video was suggested by one of my viewers on YouTube. So whoever you are, thank you very much for the video idea. And we are playing as Germany and it is turn one. And we have the production screen over here to the left. And uh, basically what you want to ask yourself turn one is what do I want to do with whatever country I am playing, what are my goals to hit in what time frame? One of the concepts in Hearts of Iron 4 is basically you have these individual divisions and the divisions consume all this equipment through battles, attrition, etc. And um, you want to keep this division equipment ratio at 100% or your divisions will not fight at full capacity. And you know, they'll never quite be at 100% because of uh, other issues like supply and things like that if you're very far away from your capital because all supply arises from your capital. But basically, you want to have equipment in your stockpile right here in order to feed, to feed the divisions in the field and keep them topped off with equipment. Another indicator of equipment is this brown bar right here. So you can see that under the army screen right there. Uh, so back to the production screen. Turn one is going to be the most important turn. What numbers do I need to set in order to feed my army with what wars I think I'm going to get myself into? And uh, if you go in and just play around with these numbers, do a few playthroughs, you'll get a good idea of what works and what doesn't work. and um, Either write these numbers down, not these exact numbers, but whatever you feel you need, and um, so that you have a point of reference, and then go back and play again and again and again, and you'll get an idea of how much equipment you need for whatever army that you build out. And what I have set up here is production for like a Germany speed run. So we're going to go heavy infantry equipment and um, like a moderate amount of support equipment, decent artillery, and some flak. And um, basically, if we speed run, go through Poland, France, and then Barbarossa, we're going to need to do flak turn one. We're going to need to produce flak turn one in order to pierce the Russian tanks because uh, USSR starts with uh, tanks turn one so we need to prepare for that turn one now obviously i'm using like metagame information but to be successful you kind of have to do things like that and uh get experience and play through the game a few times to know what to build for however you want to propagate your wars uh if we were more historical i would probably add in uh some fighters uh, and some uh, ships because I know that we'll have much more time to build a lot more military factories and to ramp our production up because we have a few more years uh, until there's going to be war. But with this speed run, I'm going to have war in like a year. So I need to be focused on exactly what I, the equipment that I need for the army that I'm going to build out. And just to highlight this point again, um, I've played Germany so many times. I know that I've tested like going into Operation Barbarossa on the Eastern Front and um, having like 100 divisions versus 80 divisions was, was like critical. So even having the difference between 80 divisions and 87, there was a huge difference in my success based on the fact that I could not supply enough equipment to 87 divisions, but I could supply a lot of equipment to 80, and those 80 divisions performed way better than the 87 divisions. And you'll get that feel through, through playthroughs, but basically you need to make sure that you're paying attention to how many divisions you need and probably go more narrow, as narrow as possible, than wide, because it's harder to basically feed equipment to a lot of different divisions and a smaller army 
that's that's better built out um, with good division templates and everything is going to be better than just spamming out uh, divisions. So having quality division templates and quality divisions with good training is uh, extremely important to think about. Um, other things that you could do with production is uh, as you ramp up your production, you can obviously play with what you want built when, and you can even add like another production line here of artillery. I'm already building artillery, but say I wanted to go artillery heavy. I could build into artillery here, then switch to the flak and then go back to artillery without having to micro this screen. So that's that's kind of a cool trick that you can use. Um, try not to build too much equipment, I would say. Uh, too many different types of equipment. And what you want to do is find equipment with a lot of redundancies. You see that I'm using black here and that I proposed using that against enemy armor. Well, how is that possible? Black has a piercing rating. So you can use flak to pierce enemy armor in enemy fortresses, as well as shoot down aircraft. So it's a multi-use weapon. And therefore, it is incredibly valuable um, in terms of looking at planes. Uh, if I had TAC bombers, I get a uh, greater range. I also have greater naval attack and naval targeting. Um, they are way more expensive than CAS, but they kind of do everything that you need. Um, so if I have... Let's get on to a tactical bomber here. These tactical bombers uh, can even strategic bomb if I want to. Whereas, let's go head over to the CAS. The CAS have close air support, naval strike, and port strike. Uh, whereas the tactical bombers have that extra option to strategic bomb. So if you just have a narrow set of production lines here, um, you will be able to produce equipment that can be that is multi-use and um, that's always something that you want to think about now you might see here that i started off with these uh different production lines at the beginning of the game and you don't see a red bar here and basically that red bar is a modifier of production efficiency and the production efficiency grows over time so turn one, I had perfect production efficiency here. And even if I build out like more units, um, say I build out more support equipment, I just added all those factories. It didn't affect my production effic efficiency turn one. So that's a factor that you need to think of. I In this hypothetic, hypothetical build that I'm talking about where I want to go for Barbarossa, I need flak turn one. So I'm taking a production efficiency hit. Um, but these other lines do not get a production efficiency hit. So think about like spamming out car carabiner 98 K's turn one, because there's no production efficiency hit there and reducing the amount of unit types or equipment types that you, that you use here. Uh, another concept of how to build um different equipment types is what doctrine you're going to use and so there's going to be two more things i'm going to talk about here first the, the the different doctrines i have a video on that if i was to go superior firepower doctrine it basically buffs soft attack quite a bit i'd probably be more focused on artillery because there's artillery buffs like dispersed support here if I went mobile warfare doctrine, I would probably focus more on tanks because tanks are awesome. And um, this doctrine gives me buff buffs to tanks. Uh, grand battle plan doctrine, I would probably go heavy on the guns because it mainly gives you um, a lot of like defense, entrenchment bonus, planning bonus, things like that. Things that would synergize with more of like a defensive shielding army with an eventual offensive after the enemy 
wears itself down. But I have another video on doctrines and your doctrine, which doctrine you're going to use is going to determine which equipment types you're going to use over here. Okay, last concept is your production efficiency is modified by what type of industry you choose. Concentrated or dispersed? Dispersed industry plays itself to more, uh, making more variant types and making many different types of equipment. Whereas concentrated, you want to narrow down the types of equipment uh, that you are producing and only produce um, what you think you need instead of just producing like one-offs of uh, different, uh, let's say, tanks. Uh, because every time I switch my production, I'm going to take a huge production efficiency hit. Now, concentrated industry comes with a 5% bonus over dispersed industry uh, to, to production. So you'll be able to produce 5% more equipment in each of the different types of equipment. So that's something to think about as well. And you can also, um, it gives you a benefit to how many factories or slots you have open to build in different provinces. So that's something to think about as well. So there's the main concepts that you need to know about the production screen. I know that this was more of a beginner type of video, but um, someone on YouTube asked for it. So uh, I thought I would try to explain this to you. If you have more questions, please um, DM me or just put a comment in one of my YouTube videos and I'll try to, to, to do a video on whatever topic you feel that you need. And uh, please check me out on Discord, Patreon, Steam, and uh, I also live stream on Twitch and YouTube, and I will see you on the next one.